Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday. Uh, how is everyone? I'm actually going to look for myself right now on YouTube Live. It appears that Michelle forgot to set it up. Um, so that's totally okay. Not a big deal. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to go to my channel. Okay, I see that we are live. That is fantastic. So uh, welcome, welcome. My name is Marina and I am part of the Flipping Gals podcast. Michelle and I, we used to do a podcast. Michelle's my partner uh, where we actually started doing this podcast about two to three years ago to share our journey. And how's it going, Keely? Happy Taco Tuesday to you all the way in the UK. Um, and then the pandemic hit, right? The pandemic hit last, last year in 2020, right around this time. So it's already been a year. I can't believe that. And we had extra time on our hands, right? So we saved a lot of time just from the commute, like 15 hours at least a week from not having a commute and being able to work from home. And that resulted in us being able to, um, you know, do a podcast. We started doing like, it wasn't a podcast at first. It was just IG live, Instagram live every day in the morning with our coffee, which was really fun. And then we decided, hey, why don't we just you know, start uploading and recording these to our, to the podcast so that um, there can be other other ways, right? There's different ways to get information. There's audio through podcasts, there's visual through YouTube or Instagram Live. So then we moved from Instagram to YouTube because we needed the space. So Instagram Live is super awesome and fun and we love it, but it's little. It's like on a phone and we were really squished. So <laughs> that's like the whole reason we commuted. So um, hi, Irish Lux. Happy Taco Tuesday to you. And so I do want to re review our sales of last week, which is what we typically do. So we, uh, I, I say we, but it is now I, Marina, <laughs> I go live Tuesdays and Thursdays. And typically on Tuesdays, I like to share our sales from last week and then just touch a little bit on a reselling topic that would be fun or interesting. So Michelle is uh, taking some time off. She, um, for her, she feels overwhelmed with the side hustle, which is understandable. It's not really for everybody, right? And um, for someone like me, I enjoy the side hustle. It's a really fun hobby. And I don't mind devoting all of my free time or at least like 75% of my free time <laughs> to this side hobby because I absolutely love it. Uh, so hello, Marina, Marina H. Hey, standout staples. Yes, always so glad to see a fellow Marina because at least here in, in the area where I live in California, it's rare, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, thanks for stopping by and happy Taco Tuesday to you. So I would like to share uh, our sales. So I think you know, one of the things that we discuss is, especially as women, how important it is to be transparent with when it comes to earning money, right? When it comes to earning income. So one of the things that I absolutely love about this side hustle is that it has taught us a lot. It has taught us how to run a business. We're still learning. We're going into year three and we're still learning about running a business, but those are like important life skills, right? It's important to be able to learn different ways to make money. And this is one of them. So what we enjoy doing as our hobby, as our side hustle, is we like to buy things and then sell them online, which makes them accessible to people. Um, it's convenient, right? So I mean, if you buy online, you know that maybe one of the reasons you do it and you don't mind paying a little bit more, um, whether it's like a delivery service for you know, takeout or a product because it's just so convenient. I could be watching my favorite show on TV and order lunch and like, you know, my groceries for the week. So, um, okay. So Marina H said it's rare in Texas as well. Joining us from Texas. Hello. Shout out to Texas. How's the weather in Texas going? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Please let me know if you are uh, and, and, you know, reseller, wherever you are in your journey, how did your sales go last week? I know um, in the U.S., people are starting to get those checks, right? The uh, stimulus, is it called stimulus checks? I forget the name of them, but it's a, it's a good amount of money. It's like $1,400 per person. And then if you have kids, it's, uh, I don't know, I thought it, I don't remember what it is. It's like $3,000 a kid or something like that. So it's pretty significant. I've been seeing good things in terms of sales. 
Um, and I'm going to share how our sales went. Marina H says, thanks for sharing your sales, Marina. My customers are already on vacation mode, LOL. Vacation mode, are we, are we talking spring break? Or what kind of vacation are we talking about? I'm on vacation mode. <laughs> Been ready to take a vacation since last year. That's for sure. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And let me know if you see it, because I am still learning how to do this. Whereas Michelle, who was doing it before, she was pro. So, okay, it looks, I think it looks like we're in. All right, yeah, I think it looks like we're in. So last week's sales, and then I'm gonna also recap an estate sale hall that we had a couple weeks ago. We did go to an estate sale. And I wanted to share some of the items that I got there because it's always really fun and it's a great way to learn about what kind of things we pick up at estate sales and maybe um, you can look at as well. So how do we do last week? So this is these are our numbers. We have a gross of 1,495 and a profit of 952.13 for the week of March 15th. And so, um, okay, got it. Yeah, so Marina's clarifying, she said, Yes, stimulus stimulus check. Thank you so much. And then she said things that are selling for her are like swimming suits and sandals. Yeah, so if you yeah, that's true. Yes, definitely like some sales like shorts started to sell for us this last week and this week and um you know those spring colors like we have these really cute yellow glitter vans. Those are selling really well for us. So definitely starting to see those sales also. And first day of spring was a couple of days ago, right? So, all right. So our eBay sales were 356. So if Duncan were here, who's our our moderator, he would be really proud because they're go our sales are, you know, they're up from what it's been in the last few months. Poshmark was 239, a healthy 239. Etsy was 301, and Ricari was 54. So not bad. That was our spread there. So what was your best platform? unbelievable that ebay was our, our best platform this week because usually uh we do pretty well on the etsy platform speaking of the devil duncan our moderator is here he said how much do you have to pay your va does she have to research every item that is actually correct so look duncan is very very savvy when it comes to reselling he's been doing it for a long time and um, so proud of you, Duncan, for getting, I think it's like over 10,000 or is it 15,000 in feedback, positive feedback on eBay. He's just, he's such a pro. Um, and he does have a Facebook group for eBay. So if you want a place where you could ask your questions, he's so good at like responding to you in his group. So Duncan, if you want to put that in the comment there, um, Duncan said, I didn't get a notification. I am so sorry, Duncan, um, about that. I will have a little chat with Michelle. Maybe um, maybe she, it slipped her mind. She's been, again, taking it easy. So once you turn it off, like it's easy to forget about these little things there. Um, but thanks to Michelle for helping me, us and me make this beautiful presentation for those who are watching us live on YouTube. And so, yes, Duncan put his link in the group. So if you're venturing into eBay, you have questions for him, please join the group. There's active conversation there every single day about eBay. So yes, definitely. Now, Keely said, I haven't started listing yet. Hoping to get going this or next week. I've heard that things are up and down in the UK though. Lots of issues with eBay and PayPal. Um, yeah, so the good news, I think Keely, and again, Keely, are you part of Duncan's group? If not, please go ahead and join. Um, I think that now eBay is changing their payments to manage payments, which should improve it and you will get your money faster. Um, also, Keely, if I don't know if we talked about this before, but Vendu, which is our cross listing app that we use, they do five free listings every month. Um, highly, highly recommend that you try that out if possible as a cross listing app so you can list in more than one platform. So we're going to get started here with a, some show and tell. I want to show you about some of our estate hall that we had a few weeks ago. And I'm really excited about some of the items. So I physically have some here that I'm going to show you. And so this one is my favorite. So this item that you see here is a beautiful vintage green dial television. We, I can't even believe this. We only paid $5 for it and it's fully working. Um, again, it's gorgeous. The brand is Admiral. 
And this is another really cool thing about it is that it's a portable TV. So I love those like mid century modern um, style, like the 50 style where everything stands on those two little legs. So this, this TV is green, like an olive green standing on those two little legs. I actually have it with me right now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it and share it with you. I would like you to see how portable it is and how cute it is. So here is a TV. Let me just stop sharing my screen so you can actually see what it looks like. Let's see here. Okay, so you can still see my screen. Let me just do that. <laughs> okay. So do you see how cool of a TV this is? Look at this. It's shiny. I mean, I love the olive green. I'm not like a green person, but if it's like vintage things, green is awesome. Even the green houses are awesome. And the handle here is like a cream color. It has its little antenna. Um, it's so cute and it's such in such good shape. The rim around the TV is also, um, it's like a light green. And then it's got the silver um, like panel with the silver dials. And I'm just gonna kind of flip it around so you can see the back. It's not that light, it's a little bit heavy. Probably like 20 pounds or so. But look in what good condition the television is. And again, it's so cool because it's portable. So you can take it wherever you want and plug it in. And Michelle and I, we actually have a portable battery. So if we ever needed to, if we were like, if there was an emergency or something and we needed a portable TV, we could literally take this with us and our battery and plug it in and watch TV in the car. So yeah, so this TV is rare. Uh, we paid five bucks for it. Try to find a comp. We couldn't find it anywhere. It's a very rare television. So um, I did see some similar ones selling for about $300. So I think we could definitely get, you know, at least 250, 300 bucks, um, if not more, because if an item isn't listed on the comps and it's rare and it's in good condition, you can kind of just like flip a coin and probably if it's beautiful, someone's going to buy it. So this is going to go into our personal collection and look how gorgeous that is. And thank you so much, Michelle, for finding this TV for us. Very exciting. Oh no, I'm about to break some stuff. Okay, so that was uh, that was a TV, but I'm gonna go ahead and share the next item that we found at our estate sale. So definitely if you are estate sailing, uh, one of the things you wanna look for are electronics. Those definitely sell really well. You can sell electronics on any platform. Uh, eBay and Etsy generally do pretty well for us in terms of the vintage things, the vintage items. So let me see what am I doing wrong. I'm still getting the hang of sharing the screen. So I think, there we go. The next items that I found, and another thing that we highly recommend if you're checking out estate sales is look at the vintage games. Vintage games are, well, number one, they're just fun. So if you want to just add them to your collection, you could find them at estate sales. And it's always extra nice when the estate sale owners take really good care of the game. So I do have a couple here with me. And so, all right, so this is a vintage Monopoly game. Oh, I realize I am just sharing the screen. So I have on the screen two games. One is a vintage Monopoly game, and the other one is a vintage Risk game. Both games are from the company Parker Brothers. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that you can actually see the product in my hand. So you know, I actually did source this. It's not a picture from the internet, right? So look what good condition this Monopoly game is in. We have sold, I can't even tell you how many Monopoly games Michelle and I have sold. So always grab a Monopoly, a vintage Monopoly game. It's just so nostalgic. People are always searching for them. Actually, we sold a vintage Monopoly game last night. So we just sold one yesterday, not this one. But how cool is it that on the cover here it says Monopoly, real estate trading game. So it used to be like a real estate game and it just like blew and it got 
blew up and it got so, so big. And I also love looking, well, this is made in the USA. So that those are kind of interesting things you can find. And um, it also shows here it was a partnership between Parker Brothers and General Mills at that time, right? So it does have all of the original pieces inside. Again, the box is in great and excellent condition. And if you check us out on TikTok, we actually have a short video there that shows you how to ship vintage board game. So if you are not yet following us on TikTok, we are Flippin' Gals on TikTok. And um, and so here is the inside of the game. And so what I love again about this is it looks just like the ones you buy at the store, but the printing is different. Like the ink on here is not what we would see now with our laser ink printers it's like a different kind of ink that you see on there um get this they kept the original bag for the houses even the plastic homes are a different quality and of course all the playing pieces here all the originals are here the little dog i see the little dog the car the thimble they also look smaller i swear i've played with these more recently and they're bigger the hat these look much smaller for some reason um but here's a simple game of monopoly and i have so much nostalgia going on inside of me right now i don't know what to do with it <laughs> so very happy with that oh I, I do want to review a couple of the comments here so michelle is in the room how's it going michelle Thanks for being here. She said, I'm here for moral support while I'm multitasking. Appreciate that. Michelle has been doing a fantastic job for us in shipping. Our sales um, have been doing pretty well with our new VA. I do believe that uh, Duncan had a question about the VA. So I want to answer, make sure that I answer those as well. So Duncan said, how much do you have to pay your VA? Does she have to research every item? So yes, she does. She researches every item. Um, are, you know, you can pay a VA. It depends, right? It depends on what they're doing. Um, and we're paying our, <laughs> we're paying ours around two bucks an hour. Um, and she is a VA from abroad. And I did look up and that is the going rate uh, there. Um, and she's actually from the Philippines. So in the Philippines, um, yeah, she's working part time, five five days a week. She um, she hasn't worked in a while, so this is like her coming back into the workforce. And um, yeah, it's it's been great. And Michelle, she knows a uh, Tagalog, right? So she's able to really um, connect well with her, and she knows the culture there. She went to high school in the Philippines. So um, now, if you are doing a VA through a third party you may have to pay additional fees. So it may be more per hour. It may be like four or $5 an hour because you have to pay those additional fees. But we're doing a direct um, thing where we don't have to, it's not really direct, it is through a third party. But um, anyway, long story short, we're paying her um, minus those fees because of uh, this you know, wonderful group we belong to that um, that's one of the perks is they're gonna help us uh, cover those costs. So. Thanks for asking the question. And I, let's see here. I'm gonna review a couple more comments. Kel, Keely has a question about the VA. She says, I had some questions about the VA as well. Have you seen an impact on sales, for example? If Michelle is here, feel free to respond. Um, for me personally, yes. Since the VA, we have had consistent every single day sales. So. Um, it was something that we knew. I mean, I knew that was going to happen. And it's like one of those things that you're like, I know if I do this, I will get these results. But it took for us, you know, one of us to say, hey, I need a break for us to hire the VA. Isn't that so funny? You get kind of like caught up in your daily habits. So if that's something you're considering, it is just so you know, it is some work up front. Michelle spent a good amount of, you know, the first week she was there with the VA the entire time. So it is a good amount of work up front. We do make ourselves available while she is working and answer questions. 
Um, and you do want to be there. It's not like you're just going to disappear, right? Because think of if you, you know, when you're working, you need a, <laughs> you need the connection, you need direction, you need a, a, a good manager. And so it is time invested. It's just different. So now Michelle can like do 80%, 80% of her time is free, right? So she'll be working with the VA about 20% of the time, but that frees up 80% of our time. And on the weekend, if we don't list, cause we're, you know, Michelle will be listing on the weekend, the VA is not working on the weekend, then it's fine. We can take some extra time and relax and our sales are still doing decently. So let's see for some more comments here. Um, <laughs> Duncan said, woo, you're selling a TV every week. Not if we had TVs, maybe, but we no, we're not selling a TV every week. We're, we're keeping that TV. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So yes. Irish Lux, Noreen said she just joined Duncan's group. Excellent. Yes. Join his group, please. Tootsie Avila, Sandra, welcome. Happy Taco Tuesday. She said, I have a Monopoly game in Arabic and I won't sell to save my life. BNIB. What is BNIB? Brand new in box? <gasps> what? Is it an original? I've never seen one in Arabic. That is so cool. Yeah, it's hard to sell those like super treasures, isn't it? Um, that is cool. Thanks for sharing, Sandra. All right. And so Michelle said, Keely, our eBay sales picked up. I think most platforms want to see activities with your account. Yeah, and, and Poshmark also appears to have picked up as well. Excellent. Good questions. Thank you so much for asking. So so again, you know, the vintage TVs, the board games that we paid, um, you know, five bucks for each board game. Now, I do want to let you know when we went to this estate sale, it was on the last day. So often on the last days, estate sales will be doing 50% off their original prices. And so the prices we're sharing do reflect that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. I'm going to go ahead and continue um, sharing here the my show and tell estate sale. So the next item that we got items are vintage cookware or vintage kitchen electronics. So those are also be something to be on the lookout for. Now I was talking about this one last week on the left side. It's a Turbo Baker 2. It looks like R2D2. I had no idea what it was. I saw it in the kitchen. I had to whip out my Google photo, which we talked about last week to find out what it was. And I came to find out it was a bread maker and it looks so vintage and odd and unique. Like it, you know, it looks like a star Wars character, but what's cool about it is it was still selling. So we picked it up. And so we paid seven fifty for that turbo baker and bread machine. And the top lid that you see there is made out of glass. So, you know, I think, I also think that's kind of cool. You'll be able to see the bread cooking as it cooks and forms. And on the right side here is uh, what they call a baconer. So I don't know if you have ever seen one of these or any of you ever use one of these, but it's a machine that cooks bacon. So it's very simple. It's literally like the steel, like kind of looks like a toaster, like a, like a, an, a, a toaster that's inside out or something. <laughs> you lay the bacon on the hot part, you can cover it. Um, and then there's like a little container at the bottom that like holds all the fat. So all the fat just pours into this container. So I just thought it was so cool looking. It's, it appears a little on the dangerous side. So I would be really careful around this thing. Maybe use some chopsticks or something when you're taking the bacon off. Um, so some of you have heard of it. Okay. So Marina says baconator. Yum. So it sounds like maybe she has heard of it. And, um, and so, yeah, again, it was selling the items are in great condition. So one of my favorite things to get is vintage cookware from the kitchen. So another thing that we like to get aside from the vintage TVs are the vintage radios. So this is a Panasonic, uh, tape player, but it's also slash radio. We actually paid up for this one. We paid 27 50, uh, for this player here. Panasonic is a fantastic brand when it comes to electronics. Um, it has an antenna. And so we do test all of the items. We bring a battery with us, make sure they're working before you buy them. Because again, oftentimes in estate sales, these items will be final sales. So 
you don't want to get stuck with an ex especially an expensive item that doesn't work a hundred percent so that was a panasonic vintage panasonic radio which is lovely this is one of my favorites here I, again, I was hanging out in the kitchen the whole time <laughs> during the estate sale. Michelle and I, we like to split up and find our own interests. And so this is a Farber Ware electric grill. It's a, Well, they call it an electric broiler. It looks like an electric grill. Uh, again, this is made in the USA. Excellent condition. You can, it looks like you can make hamburgers on it. And uh, we also only paid $7.50 for it. And yes, it is still selling for a good price. Looked up comps and they were fantastic. Um, this one here was really interesting. This is a Hurricane Walker. It's like a, a, it's a, it's a cane that you can fold into three parts. And you can't see it here, but this cane is kind of attached with a rope inside. And then it's hollow on the outside. So when you fold it you pull it apart you can fold it into three there's a little stand at the bottom um, but when you extend like when it's folded if you just extend it out because of that rope inside it just it just attaches automatically it's like the coolest thing you can also adjust the height um so again we paid five for this it only sells for twenty dollars but it's a really cool cane we were really impressed when we when we found this one and it sold within a week of listing right away uh, this was another kind of gamble we found a bunch of vintage playboy magazines we don't really know how well they sell the comps were really not that great um, but we decided to try it so um, here's a bundle of playboy magazines from the 60s there are collectors out there um, and we paid 19.44 for this lot of 12 magazines well it looks like 10 in the picture actually Yes. All right, and so more media. Again, Michelle and we love getting media and we've done really well picking up vintage newspapers. Um, and if you haven't heard this story already, we do have a Medium article on Medium, medium.com. You can find Flippin' Gals where I talk about our big uh, newspaper find, what we paid, you know, showed pictures of some of the awesome papers that we sold and their prices. But so here is um, a historical Newsweek copy of, um, it looks like, uh, please somebody help me with the name of the president here. So it talks about, it says the Warren Commission report, the assassination, right? So, um, and, and so there's a picture of a president on there. 1964, October 5th. And on the right, there is also same topic, Earl Warren reported leaving Supreme Court. So this is a part of history I never really got into too much, but the person, the owner, uh, JFK. JFK, thank you. Um, you know, he was really into this investigation um, report about Earl Warren. I did attend, um, the Earl Warren College <laughs> for in my university. So I know I know a little bit about him. And so this is uh, this should, this reminds me of our friend Duncan. Uh, here's a picture of I think it's Patrick Swayze. If I'm no, I don't know. I think I don't know if I got the name right. I think I did it. But anyway, he said, I'm not old, I'm vintage. And that's equally the same thing that our friend uh, and moder and uh, moderator here says all the time, Duncan, he says, I am not old, I'm vintage. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and review a couple of the comments here. Let me know what you thought of that show and tell. Are any of those items appealing? Would you sell any of those items if you were to find them at a yard sale, a state sale, or even a flea market? Um, and Keely has an interesting comment. She said, has anyone ever been to the world's longest yard sale? I have some YouTube videos about it and I'm obsessed with the idea. I really want to go. Um, is it located in the U.S.? Because I know there's a huge one that they do in the U.S. And definitely that's going to be like a, a thing on the bucket list for us to do 100%. And so just want to do a quick shout out to... Uh, Terry, Evolving Always Productions. Thank you so much, Terry, for stopping by. We appreciate you. And um, let's see here. Yeah, Panasonic is a good name to buy and sell. 100% is very popular. Marina says that her city makes a week-long city 
wide garage sale every year. Wow, a week long, that is the dream. Do you wanna invite us <laughs> to your city? If it's not a secret, let us know where that's located and maybe we can stop by one day to check out the yard sales, how exciting. And so let's see here. Yeah, so Marina said that she loved the old fashioned grill. Yeah, it was in such good shape. Um, I was wondering though with the grill, cause when you saw the picture, it's a bunch of grills and then you see like the electric part. So I was wondering if you're cooking a hamburger on that, does the fat, is it okay for it to drop directly on that, you know, the, the grill, the, what do you call that? The, that's not a fire, but it's like the electric panel that gets really red, kind of like an electric stove top, right? Is it okay? Yeah, I guess that would be okay. You would just have to clean it. It just, it looks brand new. So I, I couldn't see a sign of grease or anything like that on there. Um, okay. So you had a burger Duncan. Awesome. I hope it was delicious. Burgers are my favorite. I absolutely love burgers. Of course I usually do vegan now. <laughs> So, um, okay, so we have an answer here. Oh, it was Clint Eastwood, so I got it right. Did I say that right? No, I said Patrick Swayze, my bad. That was Clint Eastwood. Thank you, Keely, and thank you, Michelle. Appreciate that. And Duncan said, no, I'm not antique. Or, sorry, I am antique, not vintage. Um, I don't know about that. You have to be 100 years old to be antique. So if you're antique, you look pretty. You're in pretty good shape, Duncan. All right, so the question was, can you show the grill and the newspaper? Yes, so I actually have one one grill. It was the one that we talked about last week in front of me that I'm happy to show. I absolutely love this one too. So I remember Bill, Girl Girl Style Hubs was with us last week and he said his grandma used to cook on this grill all the time. So this one is, um, this one, they do have comps on this one so it does sell on eBay pretty regularly. Ours is a little more rare because it has the glass lid versus the steel lid. And it's a nice thick lid. It's almost like Pyrex. And so it's so simple. Here's a cord that you connect the cord with. And yes, you can tell it's vintage because look at the two prongs. They are the exact same pretty much the exact same size, right? And nowadays the prongs have like a thick one and a thin one. And so here is the pan, very simple. You can kind of tell this was used, you know, it was, it was cooked on, but again, it's really clean. There's no grease on it, right? So, and then <laughs> this is the coolest thing. It has a little guide here as to like what you're cooking and what temperature you want to use. So there's like food heat, bacon, 340. I don't know if you guys could see that. Uh, eggs, 320. Sausage, 300. Fish, 380. I wonder why fish is so high. Pancakes, also 380. That's kind of interesting. And then it says a minute steak is at 420. And then eggs fried at 300. So fried chicken, etc. See the recipe book. So I think I do have, oh, one last thing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's heavy and I, I almost dropped it. The brand is Sunbeam, but look how cool the dial is. I'm just like obsessed with how cool this dial is. And it's tiny. Look at my finger. It's like as big as my finger. Like I have to have like a little hand to, to kind of like <laughs> turn it on, but it's just so adorable. And I just, I love it. I just think it's so cool. So there it is. Sunbeam electrical appliances. And this one was actually made in, I think it was made in Canada. Yeah, um, where does it say where it was made in? Um, it does say Canada, but look how beautiful that is. That is so cool, that logo. Yeah, I believe. Um, so, and then ours also came with this little booklet. But this little booklet actually sells on eBay. So this is, or sorry, on, on Etsy. So if you ever come across little instruction booklets to the vintage electronics, they also sell. And it's in pretty good shape. Look at the look at the mom <laughs> cooking in her perfectly made, done hair and makeup, and her robe, and then the way she's putting on the saw all delicately on the eggs. <laughs> so, and then on the back, there's a, a picture of a bunch more appliances. Look how cool that is. So, um, so that's that one. 
I just, I, you know, I just think these are the coolest thing. Michelle and I, we geek out over these vintage items all the time. We love them. I think I have one more to show you. I think Michelle wanted me to display this one, right? The paper. So I have um, the Newsweek magazine is right here. These are cool. They're history. These are these are history. They're maybe not even online. So that's the difference between the online news that we see now. You can Google stuff like 10 years old, but I mean, can you find stuff from 1964? Right. So this is one of those things that you would think, let's take pictures of this and get it online so we don't lose the information. So we don't lose the history of it. And one of the things that I love, you know, Michelle and I, we geek out about these things, too, from the magazines, honestly, are the ads. And, you know, especially Michelle, because she's in marketing. I love seeing the ads. I love just kind of seeing how like gender and gender roles are displayed kind of like you saw with the woman cooking the eggs there in her perfect hair look at this this is a chrysler look how beautiful that car looks so yeah so we geek out on things like that and um and then here's that one newspaper right history right here newspaper yep so that's that's uh that's it that's my show and tell uh let me review a couple of comments here from from everyone let's see here yeah oh thank you Ke keely so keely said that sounds amazing for sourcing yeah this is where we have our fun and michelle and i we we search for these beautiful treasures <laughs> thanks noreen the heating element that works for my word that i was looking for earlier and the playboys are not sold yet we actually just listed those a few days ago so we will definitely keep you posted it's our first time venturing with those not really sure how they're gonna do so we will keep you posted for sure and um yes the question from duncan did you test the grill i did yeah so michelle and i we test all vintage appliances and electronics i even tested the bre bread maker as much as I could. I didn't leave it on for an hour, but as long as it turned on, you know, I'm fine gambling the 750 with it. And then we could do more thorough testing at home. And so um, a couple more comments here. Marina says, that's an awesome booklet I'd put in a frame on the wall, right? Isn't it so amazing? Those um, vintage, like a booklet, you know, who would have thought it would look so beautiful to us so many years, years later. So uh, let's see. So Keely said, for its age, that newspaper looks pretty good. Yeah, so definitely when you're scouting newspapers or any kind of media, you do want to find the ones that are pretty well maintained. Um, those are going to, obviously, you're going to get more for them. And this one is in actually pretty decent shape. It is a little bit yellow, but there is nothing wrong with that, right? Even like where you see it's folded, you can still read all the words. So sometimes, depending on how it's stored, um, there's a like a, a little rip right here. But we have sold newspapers that have just minor little tears like that for a good amount of money as well. Um, now, if it's in absolute perfect condition, you can get the the supreme amount for that. So yeah, so that's it. So thank you so much for joining me today and hanging out with me on a Tuesday. I feel. Um, you know, really wonderful when I get to spend time with all of you and chat about reselling my favorite hobby. And thanks, Michelle, for also uh, being here. And you owe Keely a, a cooking video on vegan tacos. But um, one day, Keely, one day I'll record her when she's making them. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and week. I will be back on Thursday with more reselling content. And feel free to send us direct messages with questions during the week on our Instagram account and or just to chat with us. You know, that's our that's our social time and that's how we meet friends all over the world. So thank you again for spending your time with us today. We super appreciate that. We look forward to the next time. Have a wonderful night. Take care and hope you get lots of sales and find a lot of beautiful treasures out there.